As you can see, I'm back in the workshop, as is the scooter. It survived everything safely, and I want to check out how well the engine actually survived the whole tour and the Nürburgring. There's one thing that I'm afraid to find though. I drove over 2000 kilometers without any problems with my gear selector box. As you might remember, I said I would take the Motorino Diavolo selector box because it makes it pretty much impossible to miss gears. But guess what? I actually made it possible. But that was clearly my mistake and it was just before the end of the tour after more than 2000 kilometers. I just slammed in the third gear under load without properly clutching because it was in such a weird driving situation. But it was a mistake, and I'm afraid that I severely damaged the third gear. However, the scooter could still be driven normally, there was no problem, but I'm still afraid of finding something. Well, these are my negative experiences with the scooter that I had on the tour. With the engine itself, I actually didn't have any real issues at all. But I'll have a closer look at it anyways. As you can see, I haven't cleaned anything. After such a long tour, it's just normal that the scooter is dirty, and I think that's okay. But as you can see, it does not lose anything, it is absolutely dry and sealed. Still, there is some moisture back here. You can see that there is a light film here, and you can also see an ugly and rather sticky black film there. Of course, there is a reason for both. This light, damp film on the back is spray back from the carburetor. I had set the carburetor to be particularly rich for the tour, a kind of safety setting so that nothing would happen, but I clearly missed the target. Unfortunately, it was way too rich, especially in the quarter throttle range. Nevertheless, it is still really impressive that even though the engine was set way too rich, it was accelerating like a beast. Now to the second film, the black one. This one came out of the exhaust. When I was working on the lever and the clutch cover, I had to take the exhaust off and we did that when it was 35 degrees in the shade and at a roundabout. I probably have forgotten to put the o-ring from the exhaust back on or broke it during assembly. So, since this incident, the exhaust is blowing a little. Before that, everything was fine. That are the two optical things that you notice at first glance and before I start taking Taking the scooter apart, I want to clean it up first. Gearbox cylinder so that it all survives. Nothing to see at the all seals, everything makes a good impression. The exhaust is dirty, but no cracks. It survived well, and here you can see why it was leaking. Remains of the ceiling compound hang out of here. Next, I'll remove the clutch. That's one of the most exciting parts. I've read some YouTube comments that were asking how the clutch would hold up on such a long tour with over 40 HP, if it would cause any problems or if it survived everything well. And that's exactly what we're going to check out now. This little lever in here gave up on the tour, and now I have a new one from DRT installed, and everything is working fine. All right, let's get the clutch out. First, the pressure plate has to be removed. We can already see that the brackets of the friction plates have also been completely preserved. The noses of the friction plates are still whole. And with over 40 HP, the Nürburgring, 2400 km tour and two weeks of driving to work daily, they look almost like new. I think that's good. But let's take the whole clutch apart, and then we'll see more. Zack! Very easy. So, the clutch could be pulled out very easily by hand without significant resistance. The interlocking, as you can see, is completely okay. It is a system that works very well, and the first thing I do is to take a look at the clutch basket. A common question is, what does it look like with these steel discs in the aluminum basket? Does it work? And as you can see, there are slight shadows visible here, but this is the case with every clutch, you can always see where the noses run off the friction plates. 
but they can hardly be felt even with a fingernail, so everything works fine here too. Another point are these screws. The two parts, the pinion and the basket, are connected with 12 screws. At the first very important notice, these screws must be properly tightened in a controlled manner, before assembly of course. Ideally secure it with a thread locker. This should be self-explanatory and has hardly been asked for by our customers. But to be on the safe side, I'll say it again. Always fasten these screws correctly. Let's answer the question if it has loosened up after so many kilometers. No. The screws and everything are still tight. Next, I'll take the clutch apart. There are slight marks here too, but nothing has run in. Everything is very unproblematic. I have still lots of frictional surface left. It hasn't really gone down at all. Spacers are good as well. Of course you can see it as with any other clutch that the contact surfaces have a slight wear, but there is no excessive wear or something that is problematic in any way. That's different to tuning clutches or heavily tuned engines, where you often see that these noses are very strongly run in, largely deformed or even hardly present. You can see a very slight burr here, where it briefly rises up at the beginning and then it stays that way. Look, the lower one looks almost new. Then, we can check the inner basket for wear. But here too the contact surfaces are in very good shape. It's made of steel, and in our version the friction plates are made from steel as well. But of course you can see shadows where they have run, but not palpable with the fingernail. Of course, I hoped it would look good, but I'm very satisfied that it looks so good after the high number of kilometers and load. Now, the clutch can be put away, and I go back to the other side and remove the cylinder. What you can already see is that I have black residues everywhere, and that I also have extra ventilation holes here. There was a new cylinder hood before the tour, and it was just too close to the cooling ribs. I didn't take enough care while installing this. I could have put more effort into the alignment and seat of the spacer plate, so it wasn't as bad now, but still, it's stupid. What you can see at first glance, as I already announced, I drove with a way too rich setup. You can see that very well on the cylinder head, too much residue. I also have a cylinder head without an o-ring. Usually, the BFA cylinder heads have an o-ring, but mine doesn't. That's why mine has a bit of ceiling compound in it. But the interesting thing is, actually, that the setup was way too rich. No surprise, but nothing bad either. But what is much more interesting is what does it all look like in here? The piston also says it ran too rich, unsurprisingly. Piston also looks nice in so far as there is no damage or excessive wear marks. Everything looks reasonably here. And maybe we can look at the cylinder again on the workbench, in proper light. First of all, you can see on the cylinder that it was properly sealed at the bottom and at the top, except for the o-ring that got lost. Unfortunately, it has leaked out here a little, doesn't look so nice. But what's important is how the cylinder itself survived. And I have to say, it doesn't look that nice at first glance, to be honest. And that's mainly due to the rich safety setting on my jets. I clearly overshot my goal here, and if you look in from below, where the rich combustion didn't get to as much, then everything looks really good, almost as good as when it was installed. If I look at the whole thing, I can say the cylinder also survived the tour very well. Before I can split the engine halves now, I have to remove the gear shift, or rather the selector box and the carburetor with the intake manifold. But before I do that, I'll drain the gear all. I forgot to do that. So, the gear all doesn't smell like gasoline, that's very good. There's no noticeable sheen on it or something. It's a bit dark, but that's relatively normal, or no, that's normal. I'll pour that out now and see if there's any residue. I've left a little bit inside now so that you can have a better look whether there are any chips in it. That's not the case. Before I take off the selector box, I have to take off the kickstart on the beef A engine, because it's a little tight between the fan duct and the kickstart. Otherwise, I cannot remove the selector box with the gear cables, because the gear cables don't fit through there. 
Everything is inconspicuous here too, on the selector box. Next is the carburetor and the intake manifold. Thinking about where I can best tie it to so that it is out of the way. Here I have the intake manifold of the membrane. Since it's not the original membrane that I used, I glued it in with sealing compound. With too much sealing compound, as you can see. But the important thing is, the membrane, in this case the Italkit membrane, survived everything undamaged. The air bellow too. If you look at this, there is no cracks or anything like that. An imprint of the clamp, but otherwise everything's fine. Next, I can unscrew the motor halves. And then, it gets exciting to see what I'll find inside. Now, all the attachments are off and I can loosen the housing screws and take the motor apart. One, two, three, four, five. So here's nothing particularly noticeable at first, but a bit of oil residue. The bearings look normal, all seals were sealed anyway. The crankshaft looks good too, that was a used one. The inner oil seal was okay as well. As I said, no fuel in the oil or the like, there was no leak anywhere. There are no traces that it somehow was leaking anywhere. Now, we'll take the transmission out and have a closer look at it. It looks pretty good at first glance, including the play. You remember how I distanced it. It's a bit bigger now, of course, but still in a small range. I'm going to take it apart and have a look at the gears. First gear, everything looks fine. Second gear, here everything is inconspicuous as well. And now comes the third gear, the one that I'm afraid of having damaged. Actually, it doesn't look that bad, and way better than expected. Two flanks look good too. I thought that I would have hit the contact surfaces of the cruciform quite strongly, but actually it looks pretty alright. Fourth gear is okay too. That was an original one. An original long fourth gear. I can't see anything negative either. So, the last thing remaining is the cruciform, and you can see that I've hit that one as well, but not bad either. I'll get that out too. You can see that I slightly caught the cruciform here, but that it is still completely straight over a fairly large width, and that with my weird driving action. There is always slight wear and tear on the corners, and here you can see that it actually looks pretty good for the fact that it had to cope with so much power. I could just put it back in and continue driving normally. So I have to say, that's better than I thought as well. With that bummer of missing the gear, I feared that there would be bigger problems to arise, but everything looks okay. The bearings rotate perfectly. I could still have a look at the crankshaft bearings to see if there are any run-ins or something, but to be honest, I think I would have noticed that. If you turn it, it sounds good. This is the bearing surface. It looks like new. The all seals look great too. No problems there either. Here you can see a black stripe on the crankshaft. Somehow I always have that, because I always mess around with the sealing compound and then it makes exactly the stripe on the crankshaft. But it's just baked in sealant, I think I can get over that. So, I have to say, the result of the visual inspection of the parts is far better than expected. Actually, there is no part where I would say, that looks bad or Luckily I discovered that, but on the contrary, I claim I could put the engine back together with exactly those parts and just do the tour again. It was important to me to open it in front of the camera so that you could see how it really looks in here. And of course, it was running too rich, but in the end I have to say everything is okay and in good condition. And doing a tour of over 2400 kilometers with 43 HP was possible without any problems.
Now I'll clean up everything and take it apart quite meticulously so that I can take a very close look at everything. But that's it for now. That's basically it with our BFA series. Thank you for watching. I think we're at a lot of episodes now. I don't know how many people of the first episode are still watching. So congratulations, you did it. Write us something nice in the comments. And if someone has really watched all episodes from one to, I don't know where we'll end up, similar to the Lindenstraße probably, then write that in the comments too. I'm curious. Thank you for watching and very important, buy a BFA engine. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. See you soon.